Good, in, good evening, everybody. This is the Educational Change Sauna from Harvard Graduate School of Education. This evening we have a special guest from Finland, Mr. Esko Aho. Esko is a former Prime Minister of Finland, uh, worked uh, with Nokia and, and many other instances in Finland, and now here um, at uh, the Kennedy School in Harvard University as a guest. We have two students here. We have a little time to talk about the, uh, the class that we had today. Uh, we spend time on uh, listening more stories about the, the past of Finland and the future of Finland as well. Um, who are you? Hi, uh, my name is Marina Chan. Um, I'm from Hong Kong originally, and I'm currently a master's student um, in uh, in education, um, focusing on language and literacy. Okay. My name is Galara. Thank you for joining us, and I am a doctor of educational leadership student at Healthy. Good. Who would like to go first? This uh, this time we spend um, mostly. Um, you know, listening to what you have in mind and, and, and then ask us responses to this. Sure. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you stated earlier in class that Finland needs to be forward thinking, but that's what you would hope for it. Yeah. And our class is on benchmarking international systems. How can Finland or any nation use benchmarking as a tool to be forward thinking? I think benchmarking is a good method to look at uh, ecosystems because because development of schools and educational system is mm -hmm. in these circumstances very much ecosystem creation it's not enough to have good teachers it's not enough to have good buildings and facilities it's not enough to have good technology at schools mm -hmm. but you need uh, good regulation you need uh, many kind of elements uh, and, and and in order to to get that ecosystem to be developed, I think benchmarking plays a role. But be careful, it's mm -hmm. not giving full picture. It's it's good tool, but it's it's not all. So use benchmarking maybe in a, to, to look at one country and what it does well, but not look at everything? Yeah, I, I think if, if you are looking at uh, global benchmarking, it's very difficult to find uh, Good model for mm -hmm. you, but but if you take individual countries which are maybe close to your own country or rather similar, then that kind of benchmarking works much better. Sure. Um, you made that wonderful analogy about um, keeping an eye not on the ice hockey puck but on where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. So along the lines of forward thinking, I'm interested to know. Um, we've seen Finland go from agrarian society to um, industrialization, and then now there's this move towards um, digitization or more service-oriented um, sector yes. participation. I'm curious to know, um, apart from digitalization, where, what other areas do you see um, uh, the need for development in order to produce this um, impetus for growth, for economic growth? Um, I think this uh, integration of physical and digital is going to be the next big thing to happen. And uh, my advice for all those who are designing strategies is keep it simple. Don't try to do everything, but try to concentrate to certain critical things. And uh, it's easier to see what has happened in history. So if you look at the agrarian Finland and industrial Finland, it was easy to understand that industrial Finland cannot be led by methods and processes uh, uh, an infrastructure that was designed for agrarian Finland. It was easy to see that that difference. But now we are facing roughly the same type of difference. The industrial structures designed for industrial development are not anymore, let's say, eligible for, for creating digital society and digital economy. We need to be able to make reforms to be done. And challenges are huge, but they are also great opportunities for all if we understand that in, a, in, the, in the right way. And uh, which sectors do you think are um, a key to kind of aligning these resources to, to meet the future? I, I think digitalization is going to have an impact everywhere. Industrial manufacturing is going to be changed. Uh, public, private services will be, will be changed. Uh, financial services, uh, uh, retail systems, everything is going to be changed. But 
I believe that the major impact is coming to the public sector, and that is not yet understood. The public sector is taking responsibility on education, healthcare, and social services, and all these areas have a huge potential. A good example from Finland, uh, I just recently saw a, a statistics that, that uh, basic or, or fundamental uh, 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 healthcare services, which are based on, on basic hospitals, the number of visits to hospitals can be reduced by 75% if we are starting to use modern mobile technologies in the most efficient way. And you can imagine that it's not only a question of saving money and resources, but it's a question of better services and higher quality. Productivity. Uh, yeah, productivity and higher quality as well, mm -hmm. because people don't have to move to hospitals, they don't have to wait and queue. And uh, sometimes uh, these new modern methods are giving uh, even, even better treatment. Can I ask you here, would the same apply also to schools, that we could have 75% less uh, people going to school because you can, you can do the same thing with, with technologies? So. No, I, I, I think it can increase productivity as well, and productivity is a good thing. Uh, I, I think it's a, one of the most important misunderstandings in the public sector that efficiency is against social, right. social, uh, social development. It's just the opposite. If you are efficient, that means that you have resources to be used for those who urgently need them. And the same in education. If you are doing using uh, modern technologies in an efficient way, that means that teachers will have time for those who need the most That's right. attention and, That's right. and the best support for, for them. That's right. So productivity is what we can do. And then there's also structural changes we need to make to make sure that we can do the best that we can do, right? So one of the issues that I feel is, is challenging and coming up is immigration. Um, Denmark, the Netherlands, France, Germany are all struggling with how they manage new immigrants and how they support them with education, health care, the basic public sector issues. How will Finland structure its policies so that it doesn't have some of the challenges mm. these other countries are having? I, I think education plays a big role in that, and uh, I return to the, the, the previous question. So, so I believe that, uh, that uh, new technological tools will be very efficient to be used for that purpose. Because, because I don't believe that, uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, immigration policies will work well if there is not going to be opportunity to, 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 be, to, to have as fast as possible good command of uh, new language. Mm -hmm. That's that's the most critical thing. Everything else is secondary to to language skills. So education to create language opportunities yeah, yeah. and then other skills. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And and integration into the new society will take place much much easier and smoother if you have a command of language. Yeah, I, I think in Finland the critical question, like Esko said often, is the Finnish language, mm -hmm. and it's because nobody speaks Finnish language when they come, move to Finland, and, and learning language and culture is a critical thing, so, so I, I agree with you. But if motivation is there, it, it happens quite nicely. I, I was at the Harvard Square uh, a few months ago, and I was discussing with a Finn, and suddenly a young lady was bypassing, and she was saying, you are speaking Finnish, in Finnish. Mm -hmm. she said that in Finnish, and she said, I spent one year in a rural local community in Finland as an exchange student, and she was speaking fluently mm -hmm. in Finnish. So motivation yes. is the key. Yeah, yeah. Is there a nation that's doing this well? Again, looking at benchmarking, is there a nation that Finland is choosing to look at of how they're integrating immigrants and their community well in education? I think Canada is quite a good example. Mm -hmm. I, uh, what I have seen, what's going on in Canada, that is very encouraging. And if you look at the Canadian society, which, which has a huge number of, uh, of uh, immigrants mm -hmm. in, the, in the country, very little conflicts, mm -hmm. very little conflicts, if any. Do you see, um, in, terms of, in terms of language policy, do you see that changing in the future? I mean, currently we see uh, not just immigrants from um, surrounding neighbors, but also a lot of Russian integration with investments and also tourism as well booming. And given that Swedish currently is the second um, official language, um, but we see Russian also, you know, increasingly 
um, you know, grow in its numbers in terms of uh, spoken yes. um, Russian. So do you see Russian potentially being on the agenda in terms of um, a, a key language? No, I don't think that Finland is... Finland has challenged with with English because English is so dominant and, and the good question is how to how to create for example education system which is able to provide good services for those Finns who are who need urgently good education but in the same time you have to be able to provide uh, English uh, 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 content for foreigners coming to Finland or foreigners who want to to, to make studies in Finland and research in Finland and that is not a very easy task because because you have to have a good balance between these two. I, I think it's very important to, to understand that universities have their national roles to play as, as well. So that is maybe the most critical thing. Otherwise, I think the modern technology is making it possible that that uh, all kind of minorities can get uh, better and better services. For example, in, in Finnish TV, we have now Swedish, uh, Finnish and Swedish program, we have a uh, Sami language used, mm -hmm. we have Russian mm -hmm. language, even Latin, Latin is used in, in, on the radio. So, so modern technology is making a lot of uh, things uh, easier uh, in, in the present circumstances. And uh, I think that makes uh, diversity easier to, 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 to be executed. And do you see that diversity um, being reflected in education in the future? Uh, yes and no. I think diversity has to be accepted as far as, far as uh, different cultural identities are concerned and, uh, and, uh, and need to keep that identity. I, I fully agree. But basic requirement is that if you move to a new country, you have to learn the language. Mm -hmm. You have to learn the language. Because otherwise, you will be isolated in a way which is not good for an individual and it's not good for the society. So you are a senior fellow here at the Kennedy School. Mm -hmm. What about American learners surprises you? What didn't you know before? I spent one year uh, with my family in, in the US, 2000-2001. Uh, and uh, I have to say that it's sometimes very difficult to understand what America actually is, because because you can see extremely negative things, but in the same time you can see extremely positive ones. For example, at schools as well, uh, my children were in the public schools in Belmont, mm -hmm. and they were wonderful schools, and we were very happy with uh, with those services we were able to get. But I know that there are a lot of uh, very bad, uh, uh, poorly performing public schools as well. And, uh, and that's why everything what is said about America is correct or wrong. It depends. <laughs> can, can I ask you the final question? How, how do you look at Finland from here? Mm -hmm. This is a long way from home, and uh, this also provides a different environment. But what, do you see things in a different light, different way from here, from the distance? Absolutely. And I, I think, unfortunately, in some way Finland has changed because of uh, our success story. We we are we are too much self confident and and uh, we are not that interested in what's going on in the outside world. We should we should be more humble and to understand that uh, there is a lot of uh, important things to be learned in different regions and uh, geographies. Not only in the U.S. but in Asia, in Africa, mm -hmm. in all kinds of uh, geographies. That's a wonderful uh, closing for this uh, educational change sound. Esko, thank you very much for visiting our class today. Uh, thank you for joining us to this uh, short uh, conversation. Thank you both uh, very much for coming. And uh, you there, please join us again next next Wednesday. Thank you very much.